this is the season of Christmas, and I wish you the joy that comes when you get to hear the sounds of both human and angels singing. So I hope in this season you have the opportunity to either make joyful music or listen to joyful music. I had that opportunity just recently. I went to a wonderful Christmas concert and it was at the Princeton Pro Musica offering and the title was in fact Truth in Advertising, Joy to the World. And I was invited and hosted by my good friends Carol and Charles McCullough. She's the singer and he's the wonderful sculptor. And they invited me into both the sounds and the sights of Christmas as this one sculpture shows we need to pay attention to how we make room for Christ or else we're going to end up like the innkeeper with a Merry Christmas sign and a Christmas tree in the window and no room for the immigrants or the strangers or those who need a place so that peace can come. And in this wonderful sculpture what I love in the corner is the animals are waiting to welcome Jesus and make room. So it is very important that there be time, time for music, and that music was like the angel songs. And it led me into the middle of a beautiful carol. And then I got lost. Now the carol was first a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And then it became a carol. And I'll read you just the first two verses so you can see where I got lost. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet their songs repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. I thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And um, that's where I got lost. I fell into silence. The sounds got broken because I began thinking about bells and bells that we might hear. And then I began thinking about bells we can't hear, not any longer, or not yet. And the first bell that came to mind was the Liberty Bell. And it was crafted, made in England, brought to the colonies. And it was rung for the first time, along with many other bells, in July 8, 1776, and every bell in the city was ringing. So that's how we know this bell, this bell rang. And at the base of this bell is engraved the following. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. And then a scripture is cited, Leviticus 25.5. And just so we all know what that is. And you shall hallow the 50th year, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. And it shall be a jubilee for you, a jubilee, a year of joy. You shall return, every one of you, to your property, and every one of you to your family. It's, it's a homecoming. It's a celebration. It's what happens, or supposed to happen, at Christmas. Of course, even those who noted the bell in its early days recognized that it didn't proclaim liberty to all inhabitants, not when it was first rung. And yet, there was something so deeply appealing in that scripture, in that inscription, that in 1835, the Anti-Slavery Society claimed that, named that, as the Liberty Bell and urged Philadelphians to follow the sound 
and support the work of abolition, even though they had the question as to whether or not there would ever be a time where public good and liberty would come together. And we don't know why it cracked. There are many stories, disputes even yet. But it was cracked, and it was fixed, and it cracked, and it was fixed, and finally, because of the damage, and because at that point it becomes so valuable as a symbol, even though it did not make a sound, it was retired. It was put in a safe place. It was never permitted to be struck again. And it hangs. It hangs with the inscription, but you can't hear it. The Liberty Bell is silent. And the question that that anti-slavery society asked, I still ask, will there ever be a time when it rings again, when every inhabitant experiences what liberty means? And then there's another bell, a bell that has never rung, and it's the world peace bell, and it's in Korea, and it was constructed in 2008, made from unusual stuff, the fragments of war, pieces of bullets from wars, dating as far back as the Civil War in the United States and the Mexican War, and wars in Ethiopia. There are over 14 nations that contributed both money and the shattered pieces of bullets to make a bell for peace in the hopes that someday, someday when there would be peace out of this very, very long war between North and South Korea, when reconciliation would finally come, that bell would sound. And the mystery of that is there's a piece that has been withheld. It's waiting, a piece that is waiting to be added. And once it's added, that bell will sound. And it will be a jubilee, and it will be the sound of peace. And it will be the gift of freedom. But it's never, it's never been sounded. And there seems little hope this Christmas that that bell will ring. And another sobering thought that led to my silence. It is one thing to make a bell out of the relics and fragments of bullets. How do you make a bell if what you are using are nuclear weapons? There will be nothing left to make a sound of peace, nor perhaps anyone left to hear such a bell. And so I found myself exactly where the poet puts us. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. What point is there in singing joy to the world? And the question is, do we have anything then but silence? If what I read of the poet and what we know in the world as we see it today is true. There is no peace on earth. Only silence. And it was then that an old memory came back. An old sound that I oh, heard when I was very young uh, because uh, we visited many churches as I was growing up. And one memory that I particularly loved, it seemed, it 
it seemed like a magic moment, a moment of mystery. It had to do with bells and the hearing of bells. And this would be practiced if you were in a tradition Roman Catholic or Anglo-Catholic or High Anglican. And this was when you had been invited to Christ's table and the priest or the presider was getting ready to announce the incredible gospel, the evangel, the good news that Emmanuel was with us. And so the people would not miss that memory and that mystery and that story of redemption that was being told at the altar, the table. There would be bells. These are sanctus bells. Sanctus, the song, that ancient song the angels sing in the book of Revelation. And we have embedded in the prayers of the table. Before that mystery, those words were said, the bell would sound. Do you hear it? It's the bell. It's the bells that mean Emmanuel. God in Christ is with us. Christmas, Easter, next Sunday, you will hear those bells. And in thinking of those bells, I was able to come to this last verse. Then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not nor doth he sleep, the wrong shall fail. I want to read that again. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth. Goodwill to men and women and every child every child of God who loves the sound of bells. <laughs>